Hi guys, I'm Electro Wookie. I am Mad Chatter. And I am Game Snark once again. And we are game. We are back to play more Five Nights at Freddy's 4. I forgot to mention in the last video, we, in our time frame, are sitting through and playing the whole thing, as far as we can, just all of us together. We're probably only going to take it to night 5 and then I'll do the rest alone, like I did with FNAF 1, and I'm going to do with FNAF 2, and we're going to do with FNAF 3. But anyway, let's jump right back in. Now, I don't know if you saw the last video, but what we would do is whenever they came to the door and we had to shut it, we would time how long the door got shut by telling a story. The last one was great, but we have to start with a new one. That's a shame. But the highlight of that story was that we got murdered at the end. We did. Mm -hmm. I hear movement on this... Oh! Well, that you? Already? Speaking of miserable old todgers... Started Tosser. Off. Okay, so, one day, we were walking through the park, you know, an amusement park, and we were watching everything going around, we saw the roller coasters and the, the, the games that you play for oh, things, crap, but then, like there. then, we saw a clown. You guys go away. I think when there are three of them, it can summon Freddy. Okay, so we saw that clown, but it wasn't just any clown. Clowns are bad enough as it is, but this one had smeared himself in marmalade down his back. And it was clear that he'd done it by himself. Now, how this happened, we don't know, but he'd been obviously using that because... He... Really? You weren't supposed to open the door until he finished his story. Are we going to have to start a new one I now? was worried Foxy would... Yeah, we're going to have to start a new one. <laughs> and it would be Game Snark's turn to start it this time. I chatter goes you last. From clowns covered in marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> there is nowhere to go. <laughs> you know what? And this time I'm going to start out in medias res. I don't know what that means. In the middle of things. I'm going to start in the middle of things. That ding always throws me off. I know. At least Foxy's not here yet. How did they even get into the room? I don't know. How are any of them here? I can only guess that these are the night terrors of the child. Ooh. Oh, okay. The gun went off with a huge bang, and we were all left standing staring at the big puddle of jam that didn't have to drip all over the floor. Electro Wookie put the gun down slightly, wiped some of the uh, jam off of his face, and said, Well, that's strange. It didn't happen that way last time. My turn next time. Oh, he's oh. here. I hope I'm not dead. Brant, go! In the closet. Who's Brant? I'm Electro Wookie. Okay. So, Electro Wookie was apparently doing these tests to see how dense jam can be to take on bullets. Well, you don't know why he started this, but for some reason, he was doing it. For the heck of it, so what can he do? He's your brother. He's our brother. You leave me alone. They're behind you, they're behind you. Get out of here, kid. Why is it blinking so hard? Go away. I think it blinks hard because Foxy's in the closet. Oh, jeez. Your turn. Okay. So, as I was testing the density of jam using bullets, for God only knows why, it occurred to me that maybe I could use jam as a way to create a bulletproof vest and thereby save millions of lives. Bobby Foxy. Check 
behind. Not yet. But this last time it hadn't turned out so well. I mean, the, the bullet had gone into the jam vest and it had started to work out really great and then all of a sudden it just blasted out the other side. Somehow that other side had also been directly towards us, I guess, based on the fact that we were splatted with it. So <laughs> going to have to smack a lighter wookie from That was a really one. long one! But the blinking was going on. Oh, God. So we need a new story now. My turn. <laughs> You're gonna have to tell the story backwards this time. Yep, you start with the end, and then we'll go backwards. We'll also do it backwards, so it's... it's... So it's Game Snark after you. Okay. Oh. This is gonna be difficult. Okay, that slight oofa pa is not uh, them coming. It has to be more definite oofa pa of... Oh, you there. Okay, the end. Oh, the end. The... Uh, no, you don't have to do the words backwards. You start with the ending. So, the... So we drove off into the sunset, accompanied by three very lovely scarecrow-like ladies. What the <laughs> hell? I'm already regretting this. Should have thought about that. Why did you speak it? One after the other, they all thanked us and then said, You know, we actually left our wallets back in that cornfield, so if you could give us a lift, we'd really appreciate it. We'll buy you waffle cones. <laughs> Even they're listening. Yeah, with rapt attention. Oh my god, your face. <laughs> Oh, I forgot that it's me now. He lost his privileges. Yeah, I checked it and I lost it. <laughs> you leave me. Okay, so, uh... And so I stood over the nameless villain sword held high, dripping with his yellow blood that dr fell on the floor and melted it like an acid. I screamed a victory cry. Where can I do? They're fat little buggers. Okay, so, you know, we fought off these evil villains. Game Snark shot one in the face with his gun. I strangled one with my cords. Electro Wookie took the main bad guy down and said, You ain't taking my cupcakes. I did. It's so realistic, too. I really would kill somebody over cupcakes. Muffins, I would just cold-bloodedly murder them before they could even do anything. <laughs> the women shrieked in horror as all of the baddies jumped into the room ninja-style. They'd all been wearing pajamas and hiding under Electro Wookiee's bed. While we'd been talking to the three scarecrows who'd come to life thanks to the power of the Buddha and a conch shell. That was a magical conch shell. <laughs> That's my time. Kind of Kong show is magical. They've not come to the door that much. Yeah, I'm starting to get really nervous about that. That would be you, sir. I dropped the chainsaw and ran over to make sure that all the people were all right. But. In doing so, my backpack ripped, and the conch shell I, we found at the ocean shore fell onto the lap of one of three scarecrows, who jumped to life in surprise. So, uh, bang, 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 when Game Snark's shotgun went off, we ran up to Electro's Wookiee room, me carrying those three scarecrows that I bought off as a special price to scare Electro Wookiee.
Oh, so that's why you bought them. You bastard. <laughs> you leave me. <laughs> you know, we never really talked about that. With homicidal n old nudists chasing after us, the conch shell shamefully in our pack, <laughs> we quickly pulled out our weapons and began sprinting for Electro Wookie's beachfront house where he conducted his jam experiments. I do have that house. I was breathing? Oh. I wanted to know how the story ended. Began. Began. <laughs> so, one, okay. One day we were walking down to see Electro Wookie's new beachfront house where he was conducting his jam experiment. Except this time it was with peanut butter. So I oh was care God. so I I've had three collectible scarecrow female scarecrows with me that I was going to scare Electro Wookie with. <laughs> when we wandered on to the this evil villain's nudist private nudist <laughs> beach. This has become much worse. There's a special beach for nudists who are also people villains. What, do you think they would hang out with the good guy nudists? No, I'm never Oh god. That. Yes, I know. You jump out and go, oh, no you don't. A boogie woogie woo. Okay, so. I dropped my chem notebook in surprise. The shock of seeing a man I thought dead had caused me to completely blank out of what I had been doing. Lecturing a class on chemistry, which I have no degree in or anything. I have no idea why I was doing it. Now, as it turns out, Electro Wookie had apparently thought I was dead this whole time. I don't know it why was he was a trying dream. to teach a chemistry class. His specialty is really physics, music, and the power of jam, and peanut butter, apparently. I'm expanding my repertoire. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Did that one look a little deformed to you, more so than usual? Yep, they do okay. that. Okay, so the reason why Electro Wookie saw James Snark was dead was because I made this really convincing puppet, which I had to drive a puppet car and blew it up. So he thought he, James Snark was dead, and I had off. <laughs> And I head off. Uh, and Shh. Off him. <laughs> off him. Okay, so, I had thought that Game Snark was dead, and as I looked on him in the audience, I realized, strangely, that I had some modicum of brotherly affection for him, and I was genuinely, slightly, almost kind of happy to see him. What is this, work of fiction? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, I'm not even sure why I went to class that day. I already passed chemistry, but I decided that maybe I needed to check in on Electro Wookie, find out why he was teaching the chemistry class. So I brought with me a book on real analysis, a game controller, and a bottle of bubble stuff, and decided to sit in and see what happened. That's a good, that's a good continuation. Uh -huh. oh! I pressed the wrong button. I did. <laughs> I know I was teaching the chemistry class. The chemistry of jam and peanut butter and how their combined powers could help you rule the earth. Hey, that makes sense. I am the jam wizard. just the fact that we found a secret basement in Electro Wookie's house. The simple fact of the matter is that none of us could deny that it was filled to the brim with jello, raspberry currant jello as a matter of fact, and none of us cared for it. <gasps> okay, so, now, so we were disgusted by all this jello, so we were wondering what to do with it, and then... And Electro Wookie, with his crazy ideas and love for catapults, decided we should fling it onto his hated neighbor's house. The Splosinges. I hate those guys. <laughs> the Splosinges. Check behind you. <laughs> Damn, what they look like. that is. That's what Their whole family, like demented teddy bears. Okay. So, it's my turn, right? Right. Okay, so, I, without wanting to explain why I was with, 
experimenting with raspberry currant jello in my extensive basement laboratory, designed and created the catapult to launch at the splozenges, my hated neighbors. So using an ice cream scoop, a very large one, we managed to cart up just bucket loads of this raspberry currant jello, put it into the catapult, and get it ready to fire at the splozenges two streets down, the one with the white picket fence and the cow-spotted dog. I didn't realize I had a dog. I did. Maybe if you didn't spend so much of your time hating them from afar, you know about their lives. I prefer to hate them. Damn splozenges. <laughs> Okay, so, we hurled the first shot and it went right into the chimney, and then the main uh, head of the family, Sir Splorge Splodgington, he wanted to think he was a royal British guy, came charging out at us with his meat cleaver. <laughs> Sir, Splor <laughs> Sir Splorge Splodgington? <laughs> yes, Lord Splodgington. He's a very bad. Mm. Okay, so Lord Splural Splozenges came running out of this house with a meat, meat cleaver yelling about raspberry currant and how it was his most loathed flavor. We, in a fit of fear, ran back inside and closed the door. We ran away from the door, which was lucky for us because... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because apparently when he'd done his time in the circus, he'd learned how to throw meat cleavers accurately from up to 200 feet away and go straight through doors. It was a regular The Shining moment. It was. He even said here, Splorty. <laughs> Splorty Splossage. <laughs> that wasn't fair! He held his breath! Splorty Splossage. <laughs> Splorty Splossage. <laughs> <laughs> he sent his three terrible triplets after us. <laughs> Wordy, and Al okay, and Al next Splosage. it's my turn. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's a noise that the animatronics made. <laughs> really kind of hoping for them to show up so we can start the story. Sad. Ooh. Okay. I almost pressed the wrong button. I was getting really paranoid because I was hearing noises on top of my roof and I was sure that Lord, Sir Lord Splotty Spargensons was after my secret recipe of a chocolate pizza with that had a cake crust, crust, chocolate pudding, and the powdered sugar sprinkled on top and was very delicious. I'm gonna check this real quick, just in case. Okay. Because I heard footsteps. Lord Sir Splory Splodgeon. Sir Lord Splory Splodgeon. It's not Splorty, it's Splory. We're not sure it's Splory. We're not sure Yes, he's very particular about his name. his first name. <laughs> This game has lost all fear for me ever since Splory Splosin showed up. <laughs> it's my turn? Yes, yes. it is. Okay, so, uh, Mad Chatter was trying very carefully to get his recipe into the safe when out of the blue, a hook came shooting across the room, latched onto his recipe, and tore it from his hands without ripping the paper. As he glanced out the window, he saw it was Cordy Splosinge in a hot air balloon cackling madly. Oh. Without any warning, both Al and Morty Splosinge came rappelling down the sides of the house. They sprayed suppressive fire from their twin M16s with shotguns underneath giving Cordy time to escape. I thought Morty was carrying my recipe. No, it's Cordy. Cordy, yeah. It's Cordy's blossoms. <laughs> okay, so, being very, having a very big temper, I ran outside. I grabbed the two, I grabbed, what were the names? Cody and Sport? No, Alan Morty. Alan Morty, and I propelled myself off the ground using their heads as springboards, and I flew through the air, 
and I bit the Cordy on the nose and grabbed my recipe and jumped down and ran straight for Electro Wookie's house. You're gonna make me die. <laughs> Okay, so, as we saw, Mad Cheddar launch across the lawn and bite poor Cordy on the face. For the first time, I felt a splurge of empathy for the splozenges. Only Cordy splozenge. I decided to make it up to him by making a batch of muffins. Bastards. Mm. And as Mad Chatter came darting to the house, gibbering as per usual and waving a piece of paper in his hand, Electro Wookie quickly and deftly plucked the recipe out of his hand, mistaking it, even though it was clearly labeled as a pizza recipe, as a cupcake recipe, and set about making it, all the while humming to himself about his oral death ray cannons, a thousand of which were already on order. It's true. All true. I deny nothing. Ooh. So, while I didn't know Electro Wookie was making cupcakes, I thought he wanted to try out my recipe, so I raced out to his basement, grabbed handfuls of red currant jelly, ran outside, <laughs> and I started bashing Zim on the head with my red currant jelly coated fists. Ooh, we must. <laughs> <laughs> Your long story has killed me! <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have to cut the, short, the recording short here. What's going to happen to the splosages in the next episode? Will Cordy ever get his nose back? You'll find, find out, out next time on Game.